Hello, this is Team Lin with Comps of X. Hope you're doing well today and you get some good trades. I want to keep on my topic of keeping your trading simple. Too many times traders get wrapped up in these complex techniques of trading when oftentimes there's ample opportunity to trade the market based on some basic setups. Again, my thinking is keep your currency pairs to a minimum of those that you understand that resonate with you and then look for common setups that happen over and over again. Even better if you can buy on a dip or look for a pullback. But today what I want to do is I want to share with you something I've shared with traders for a number of years. It's simply a way of knowing which side of the market to trade or if you should be trading at all. Years ago, back around 2000, I was speaking with some folks who are institutional traders and they used a certain technique that literally just by glance would show you which side of the market to be trading. It was based on two moving averages and I refer to it as the price action channel. It's made up of two moving averages that are similar but one is set to high price and one is set to low price and I incorporated that into my synergy trade model. As a matter of fact, the Synergy Trade Model is only made up of three indicators. You have the average price bars, the price action channel, which are these two moving averages, and then you have an oscillator referred to as a Trader's Dynamic Index. And the idea is simply that when price action and market sentiment are moving in the same direction, you have a higher probable trade. Well, in this case, what we're looking to do is simply this. When price gets below the price action channel, this two yellow lines, you trade in that direction. Now with the price action channel, whether you call it the price action channel, you call it an envelope, or maybe you call it the yellow brick road, whatever it is that you call it, you're simply looking for is price above the channel, or is price below the channel, or is price in the middle of the channel. So in this case, when price went above the channel, we're looking to trade long. We'll stay in that until we have an average price bar that changes color or closes inside. But whenever the market is inside the price action channel, there's no trading at all. Now, I often tell folks that if they step out and look at a higher time frame, like look at a four hour chart, if you go out and step out on a four hour chart, you can see that whenever price is inside that four hour chart, there's too much of a chance of the market being choppy. Just don't get involved with that. Go look for another currency pair. What you're looking for in a four hour chart or maybe even down to one hour chart is, is the market moving in a direction or is it just sideways? If it's moving in a direction, it's easy to see with the average price bars because they'll be moving up in blue or they'll be moving down in red. Now let's get back down to the 30 minute chart where I was at and you can see a nice move to the downside here. Now, I know some of you are not interested in the Synergy model. All I'm suggesting is look at a price action channel or look at an envelope. And you want it near price. And that was what the institution I was meeting with, all their thought was, well, if we have a channel that's inside the normal movement of price, we're going to find times where the market's going to make a determining factor as to which direction it's going to go. And then, after it's made that move, it's going to try to move back. And we've seen that today, the market making a determinate move to the downside as the commodity complex came off today, the Aussie dollar coming off, and it continued moving from the start of the European session all the way through the U.S. session and finally coming back and closing into this. Now, for those of you who are not even interested in the Synergy model, Let's say you may be interested in the price action channel. Well, let's look at just a traditional look of the chart. We have the Japanese candlesticks. We have a MACD, an RSI down below. And if you didn't include a basic stochastic, which is a 14.33. But you can see here the price action channel. And what makes up the price action channel? It's simply this. I've got a five smooth moving average shifted one over set to high. Okay. And then I have a five smooth shifted over one set to low. That makes up the channel. Now whether you use an 8 EMA, a 9 EMA, a 10 EMA, whatever it is that you may be using, set one to high, set one to low. Step out, look at the bigger time frame. Anytime price is inside that channel, you don't trade. Now I'm sharing with you what I learned from an institution years ago. It works over and over again. Like today, as we see that this 
moves down just the basic Japanese candlesticks, the market moves down. Even when the candlesticks came back, notice it's underneath the channel. It gets close to the channel, it bounces away from the channel. It gets close to the channel, bounces away from the channel. Now there was a moment today where it literally closed right at the channel and went inside of it and then dropped. That could have been a potential exit. Notice that the MACDs continue to slide down as the other two are working their way back up, but yet the market rolled over, or the price did, and continued dropping below. Now take a look at this too. When you consider from the moment that the Aussie dollar continued sliding down because of the commodity complex dropping off today, we saw a little bit of risk on the marketplace into the dollar uh, in some aspects of the commodity market. The dollar CAD making a strong move, the Aussie dollar coming off, the Kiwi dollar coming off. We can also see that when you have a strong move in a major currency, in this case the Aussie, making this strong continual move down below the price action channel, go look at other pairs related to that major currency. For instance, the Euro Aussie. Look at this move on the Euro Aussie. And think about this. Think about just trading the price action channel. The market comes out of the price action channel, sits on top of the price action channel, and continues moving all day long from Europe through the U.S. session and it finally closes this afternoon inside the price action channel. That's how this institution traded it. We're above the price action channel, the market pulls away from it, we trade that until it closes back inside. And you can see Friday last week that the market did the same thing. It dropped below on the Euro Aussie. Nice trade and then traded back into it. You could have exited right there. As a matter of fact, it dropped again to try to make a double bottom here. Look at the pound Aussie. Same situation here today. Strong move to the upside. Continual. And look at this. Even when the market pulled back, it stayed on top of the price action channel and traded away. So the idea is simply this. To simplify your trading, place a channel on your chart using a high price and a low price. I like using the five smooth, high and low, shifted one over. When price is above the channel, trade long. When price is below the channel, trade short. When price closes inside the channel, exit your trade. Or if price is trading inside that channel going sideways, stay out of the market. Go look for another currency pair to trade because obviously there's too much chop, too much up and down going on right now to determine which direction the price action channel will go. As one person put it to me, the price action channel is like the yellow brick road to Oz. Follow the yellow brick road, you might find yourself having a lot more good trades. Well, this is Dean Malone with CompassFX. Y'all make it a great day. Get some good trades. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.